Hey, it's Jamie. Back with some more 3D printing tips and hints. So, as you can see here, I've got my Mark 46 back part that I'm starting to print out. And it's it's got the nice parts on it, but there's a whole bunch of holes in it, which I'm going to have to fix. I'm not going to reprint this part. I'm just going to um, spot putty it, fill it in, and then call it a day. So, uh, the back side is looking not as, not as great either. So, now... You can ultimately try and figure out what this is, and it's going to come down to three things. Number one, it could be your filament. It could be the filament's old, it's got moisture in it, or it's got a whole bunch of junk in it, it's clogging up your nozzle, some other issues, and that's that's one thing. So, uh, I recently just changed the nozzle on this one, so I know that that's not the issue. Uh, the nozzle's pretty clean there. So, and I just changed it yesterday because I was experiencing a little bit of this earlier and it was kind of like, what's going on? Alright, we'll start with the simple thing first, change the nozzle. So, um, I've sort of ruled out that it's it's the actual roll of filament. Um, so, the, the next thing you got to figure is it's got to be some sort of mechanical issue. Now, what you can do is take some acetone with the rag, wipe this down real quick, and then using you can use uh, uh, white lithium grease or sewing machine oil, 3-in-1 oil sort of works as well. Uh, basically, you, you want to lubricate it, but not too much. And you want to make sure that you have a nice smooth movement across your, your axis here to make sure that um, it's not sticking or hanging on anything, because that will cause some issues with this. Now, the third thing it can be, which is what's happening in my case, is that when you're printing and the print head's moving back and forth, this is trying to extrude a proper amount of plastic to go through the hot end um, so that it can put down proper lines. Well, if this is slipping, uh, it's not going to put the full amount of the plastic that you need into your print, and you'll end up with results like this. So, as you can see, and I'm going to see if I can get this to focus, there's a whole bunch of junk inside there. So, I'm going to take some acetone with the, with the brush after I re remove this. So I'm going to fire a perpetuator here in a minute, uh, heat up the hot end here, pull the filament out, and then I may even take this, this portion off here and then clean this whole, this whole knurled uh, gear section there because uh, that's what it looks like it ultimately needs because it's, it's slipping. So if you're getting prints like this, as I said, it could be one of three things. It could be the filament, it could be a mechanical issue, uh, either uh, with your rail here or with your extruder here. So, um, just keep that in mind, guys, while you're trying to uh, troubleshoot your 3D prints. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I'll come back in a little bit, show you what the results are afterwards. And then uh, I'll start the print. That's no good. I've got to figure out where that goes. Um, but anyways, alright, so I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Alright, guys, so I got the, the top clip off here and uh, starting to do the cleaning. But you can see a little better now that there's... There's a whole bunch of junk in there, and that's not going to make it so it'll it'll grab really well. In fact, if you take a look at the the piece of filament that came out of the uh, out of the nozzle here, uh, you can see that it's got a whole bunch of chew marks in it. Let's see if we can get that pulled better here. It's got a whole bunch of chew marks in it, which means that it's, it's digging in, but it's not. It's 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 stri it's slipping. So. Um, that's that's another thing. So uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I cut that section off and we're just going to go ahead and clean this up here. Get all the junk off there and then uh, attempt to do the new print. So uh, I'll be back when I put it all back together. Alright guys, so I'm back. It's all cleaned up. Uh, we're going to go and do some extrusion here and make sure that everything's okay. So let's see. You can see, we'll, see, we still have some slipping, which I'm not too happy about, but let me, uh, let me see if I can get this to... Yeah, we're still getting some slipping. Maybe, I'll be right back. Alright, so after some adjustment of the spring tensioner here, I've gotten some, uh, some better results here now. Um, it actually goes through and doesn't slip now. and actually does a proper feed for the filament, so... Um, just be mindful of your spring tensioner as well, because if it's too loose, it'll grab and not grab enough, and it'll slip and start grabbing um, plastic off the knurling, 
or the, the knurling will get f filled with plastic and then you, you'll get no grabs at all. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're adjusting or trying to do your, your 3D print head. Um, so just a little bit, another tip maybe. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my ABS slurry on the bed here and uh, start printing. So I'll come back in a little bit after this is fully assembled. I'm going to put the cooling uh, cooling fin on and then the fan as well. So, all right, guys. So I'm back. Uh, that's all together, and it's doing well. So uh, I've got Kira going there, and I'm going to start putting some ABS slurry on the bed. Uh, basically, what this is is acetone. And then, uh, if I have extra, let's say, um, support material, I break it down and I put it into a jar with some acetone. And then, uh, basically, use it as a, as a um, conductor for the for the heated bed to print on top of. Just because it's same same material, it should stick well. Uh, that sort of stuff. So uh, usually I like to apply this when the, the bed's heating up. So you can see right here the bed's heating up slowly. Of course, obviously adding you know cold acetone and ABS on top of this will kind of slow it down, but it sort of cooks the ABS under the glass, uh, which is a good thing because then you get a, a somewhat flat surface uh, to print upon. And it just kind of makes the whole print better, uh, especially when you're doing it with ABS. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I think that's probably good enough. I'm going to get a little bit of the edges here just because I know this goes a little bit towards the edge. Um, basically, I've, I've broken down the parts, the, the whole back part of the, um, the armor. Into, into smaller chunks that are 8x8 eight eight because that's what the size of my bed is. So I think that's pretty much about it for now. So we're going to go ahead and wait for this to start printing. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and retire for the rest of the night. It's been a long day for me. Uh, just came back from work probably about you know, about an hour ago. And then it's taken me that long to go ahead and go through this and make sure that everything's good. So, um, But anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to continue on with this video and, and, and the series of printing out the Iron Man armor. Uh, leave a like or uh, a comment down below if you have any questions. Obviously, share, subscribe, and like, as always, guys, and do your thing. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, prologue. Here, here's the print as it looks now. It's, it's not all that great. I got to do some more adjustments to my settings and whatnot, but there's no holes, and it's looking a lot better than it was before. So. Uh, I consider that a fix. Catch you guys in the next video.